The Lock On Twin Pack means double the action and twice the fun when you get a chance to play it. The Lock On Twin Pack for two kids, for two bigger kids. Danny, we're in big trouble. We need a big sword. Call up the five Super Zeo Zords. Combine them to become the awesome Deluxe Super Zeo Megazord. With its two Super Power Swords, nothing can stand in its way. Deluxe Super Zeo Megazord from Bandai. Unleash the power. How many planets have disappeared so far? Six or three red planets, two blue and a green one. And what does the seismic report tell us? Sir, all the missing planets were irresistible due to their biscuit core, chocolate and sugar crust. We believe we're at unusually high risk. But at risk from what? That, sir! Oh, no. What is it? New Cadbury's Astros. So delicious, they're doomed. She's bewitching. Abracadabra. <laughs> she has a funny way of keeping fit and some weirdo friends. I tried to be an outsider, but I didn't really fit in. She's cool. Even if her gang is a bunch of headbangers. Mondays, 25 past four on CITV. An escape artist who'll eat anything is running riot now in Animal Ark. Nothing left to think positive about. Right then, it's punishment time. What? We're going to go home the long way. Mandy, I absolutely forbid. Mandy! <laughs> you give me up and run! If I catch you, I'll wring your neck! Go on, shoot! Go! Oh. Go on! Oh, no! Shoot! Shoot! Don't own no, no, up no. the ornamental ivy! Don't you dare touch my roses! Don't you uh -oh. touch my roses! Bliss, a breather. All right, then. Dad, look. Let's play it by big boys' rules. You stay there while I go and get my gun, you stupid scrub. <laughs> Serves him right. Mandy, for heaven's sake, come back. Hey, you! You're testing it. Get out of my garden! I'm going, don't worry. I'm taking the goat with me so you can't hurt him again. Dad? Dad? Oh, Dad. Dad, I'm surprised at you. Surprised and disappointed. Sorry, Mandy, I couldn't take any more. If you ought to have any chance in the father's race, then you're really going to have to buckle down and do some hard work. I know, I agree. I don't know what came over me. You won't tell your mother, will you? No, you have to tell me what to do with this goat. Well, return it to its owner. What's the address on the collar? Um, Houdini, a great name. <laughs> High Cross Farm. Slim shoulders, wide hips, strong legs, good feet, healthy growth on the face. Are talking about the goat? No, sweetheart, I was talking about you. Mm. <laughs> British Alpine breed. Good pedigree. Always been a passion of mine, yes. goats. I made a special study of them when I was at college, way back. Hmm, must have been. Thank you. <laughs> so, do you think he really would have harmed Houdini? Sam Weston? Well, he's capable of it. Good with roses, though. Hi, Cobb. It's where the goat lady lives, isn't it? Oh, people call her the goat lady. Her real name's Lydia Fawcett. 
She hardly ever leaves the place. Farming's in her blood, not like Sam Weston. Hmm. She's got a family. Her goats are her family. No, nope. Lydia's the last of the Fawcett's. When she leaves High Cross, her whole way of life will come to an end. My goat! Oh, I brought him back. So, you're living up your name again, Houdini. I'm afraid he ended up in Mr. Weston's garden. Not again, Houdini. He enjoyed the ivy. There's two things Houdini enjoys, anything green and wandering off. Um, Miss Fawcett, may I see your other goats? What do you know about goats, then? Well, I know Houdini's a British alpine and he's a good pedigree. A fine specimen, got wide hips. Strong legs, good feet, and a healthy growth on the face. So you already know what makes a good one. Who are you, then? Um, I'm Mandy Hope. Well, Mandy Hope. Let's go and see some goats. Oh, it's nice and cosy warm in here. Oh, well, goats detest the cold and damp. <laughs> so when you let them out, then, they run off? Well, Udini's the worst. My, new, my walls and fences aren't what they should be, which doesn't help now that Western has bought the land next to mine. Bad fences make bad neighbours. So his land runs all the way up to here? Yes. Looks like I've got a problem, doesn't it? Oh, would you mind bringing that bucket yeah. for me? Especially if Houdini keeps getting out and eating Mr. Weston's prized roses. <laughs> he enters them in summer show every year and usually wins. Why don't you enter Houdini in the best goat competition? Oh, I haven't done anything like that in years. How many goats have you got altogether then? Twelve, including Houdini, my Billy. The rest are nannies. Hmm, so he's pretty important then. Without him, there'd be no next generation. Hmm. Oh, I used to grow loads of fresh vegetables for him. Makes their look better, you see, but uh, I just can't manage anymore. You want them yourself as well then? Oh, yes, by hand. Stored in the cool room. Cheese maker comes every three days. I've never actually tried goat's milk. Well, I, I better give you some to take with you. So what do you think of the milk? Me? Um, it's great. Great as in delicious, or great as in... Yuck. Yuck. <laughs> right. <clears throat> Now I've got what I wanted, an empty jar. So, collecting screw-top jars. Is that your new craze then, Mandy? No, James. This is a passport. We can use it to get back into High Cross Farm. I brought the jar back. Oh, you shouldn't have bothered. Oh, no, I wanted to. And I wanted to see the goats again. Did you? Did you know? Well, as you're here, you might as well make yourself useful. This is my friend James, and this is Blackie. Oh, funny name for Golden Labrador. It's a long story. I don't remember people's names, only goats. And dogs. Hello, Blackie. So, what can we do? Well, how would you like to learn how to milk a goat? Oh, yes. Is it difficult? No, not with Jemima. She's agreeable. And would it be difficult to milk Houdini? Very. Houdini's a billy goat. He's a male. Is he all there? Most of the time, Miss Fawcett. <clears throat> May I say hello to Houdini before we begin? Yes, of course you can. He's in his pen. Thank you. And uh, you can call me Lydia. Oh, thanks, Lydia. You know, you really should enter Houdini in the show. Miss Fawcett, I mean, Lydia, where's Houdini? He's gone. What? Oh, no. The door's open. He's lived up to his name again. He's escaped. I don't know. I tether that goat. I chain him. I lock him up. But like his namesake, nothing can hold Houdini. Don't worry, we'll get him back for you. And I tell you, I haven't seen a goat. Oh, can't we just check? You most certainly can't. 
keep that dog back. Lucky. Fair boy. I'm sure the goat doesn't mean to be a pest. It's just that Miss Force is having problems growing stuff at the moment. Yeah, and she can't afford to buy any. If her business venture is undercapitalized, that's no concern of mine. Now be off, and don't let me catch you in the garden again. Oh, we wouldn't trespass, would we, James? Well, wouldn't we? Yeah. Oh, uh, we wouldn't. I mean, um, goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Andy, we're trespassing. And worse still, you're leading a Labrador astray. If Mr. Weston had told the truth in the first place, we wouldn't be doing this. Come on. What's the shape back? I want to go home. Oh, no! What? I think he's been poisoned. He's not dead. Not yet, but he will be if I don't get help. Come on, come on. Miss Buck Smythe. It's you, Mandolin. Uh, Mandy. Mandy. Miss Buck Smythe, please, I need to use your telephone. It's an emergency. Now, come in, please. Oh, don't with those muddy things on. <sighs> Simon, is Mum there or Dad? No. What's up? I'll tell you what's up. It's a goat, a poisoned goat. A goat? A goat? I thought you said this was an emergency. Yep, it's poison. Someone's fed him rhododendron. Deliberately. It looks like it. If you'd only nibble off a few leaves, not ripped a whole branch off. Hey, you lot, what are you doing? What have you done to Houdini? None of your business. If you've deliberately poisoned this goat, you've committed a criminal offence. Criminal? Me? He won't die, will he? Are you sure it was rhododendron? Yes. But I'm afraid there's no antidote. But there's got to be something we can do, Mum. There's nothing we can do. I'm sorry, love. Just remember this. My grandpa's old stock here, but... Uh, what can you do when there's no antidote? Uh, not with modern medicines, but these are homemade remedies, tried and tested over the years. Uh, here we are, poisons. Dissolve bicarbonate of soda into melted lard. Oh, come on, Simon. That sort of remedy has no basis in medical fact. I mean, melted lard? At least let's just give it a try, Mum. You've got nothing to lose. Right, you better get down the shop and get some lard. I haven't got any in my kitchen. Simon, it's over to you now. This is your case. Copy, quick. Instant will do. I don't mind making a meal for you. It's not for me. It's for Houdini. I need coffee as a stimulant and fast. How's he doing? Still unconscious, but I think he's thrown up all the poison. Thanks to my granddad's remedy. <laughs> Boy, if I lose Eugenie, that's me finished. He's my Billy. I have to give up my cross. He's going to be all right. We're going to keep him in overnight just to monitor his pulse. Oh, Houdini. Oh, Houdini. Well done, Simon. You saved him. Oh, not the vet. Well, my granddad, really. It's his remedy. I bet I know which one, the old bicarbon lard, they eh? <laughs> Why, you don't always work. I had six goats eat rhododendron once. Only two survived. Yeah. Dean, he's been lucky. Mandy, I'm going to take your advice. My advice? I'm going to enter Udini in the best goat competition at the summer fair. So, Mr. Bell, do you manage to sell all of your vegetables? <laughs> Chance would be a fine thing. No, well, if it's too small to sell everything I grow, Slow going, then, is it, Mr. Bell? Too slow? I can't give the stuff away. That's where you're wrong, Mr. Bell. You can give the stuff away, and in a good cause. Oh, and what's that, then? Well, the goat that I've crossed could actually do with some fresh vegetables. At the I moment. cross? You say? Yes, and it's forfeit, then. Well, I know you're here, Fawcett. <laughs> and someone. 
Her dad used to get me over when he needs some carpentry doing. She used to come down to the hall for dances. Miss Fawcett? Yeah. She were a pretty lass in them days. But she never danced. Always a wallflower. <laughs> the band always finished up with the same number. Save the last dance for me. Mr. James? Mm -hmm. Oh, just a song on Twilight. That was the one. <laughs> Here they need. They turn down the lights. And come the last verse, the band will stop playing. And you, you dance through the silence, hearing the melody in your head. And the gentleman would whistle the tune softly. And you dance the smooch. <laughs> <laughs> you knew how to enjoy yourselves in those days, didn't you, Mr. Bell? <laughs> well, some of us did. <laughs> I told Lydia she was going to dance the last dance with me, but... What? Oh, when the band started to play, I couldn't see her. She'd gone. So you went home smoochless? Lydia Fawcett, eh? Right. Well, she can have as much veg as she wants. <laughs> Here. Go on, hey. <laughs> oh, help yourself. Oh, thank you, Mr. Now, you give these to Lydia, huh? And tell her, tell her, if she's going to the summer show, Belle still wants to dance. Huh? <laughs> It's a goat's feast. <laughs> oh, and uh, Mr. Bell will be giving us some every day. Ernie Bell. And he also sent these for you. <gasps> for me? Mm -hmm. And he said to say that... Bell still wants to dance. I let him down once. It was the last dance. Just a song at twilight. <clears throat> the smooch. How does that tune go? Just a song at twilight When the lights are low Though the heart be weary Sad the day is long Who wants to dance, does he? Yes, at the summer show. Though the heart be weary, sad the day is long. Oh, you didn't tell him Mr. Bell's going to come up with a load of timber to build a fence? Well, I think she's had enough excitement for one day. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> yeah, it means that Houdini won't be able to get away then. The bad fences make bad neighbours. That's what she said. But I mean, even Mr. Weston got hate to go to can't see. Or hurt him. Mind you, he'll see him at the summer fair. I mean, Mr. Weston's bound to enter his prize roses. Yeah, Miss Fawcett sent a Houdini to the best goat class, so... Uh... There could be trouble ahead. <laughs> Just great. Lydia will have him spotted. <laughs> Not a hair out of place, then he gets out and goes and rolls in that horse manure. Oh, horse manure? <laughs> Don't worry, we're getting cleaned up for you, won't we, James? Oh, we will. You haven't got much time. The judging is about to start. Don't worry, Mr. Toss. Get that disgusting heap out of my way. This disgusting heap is actually the goat you tried to poison. 
You should be careful what you say, young lady, making wild accusations like that. Hope your robes get green fly. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are participating in the cause race, that I ask. Ernie? Yeah. What do you think of me marrows then? Oh, same as I do every show, Burke. That's why I won't be entering any of mine. Oh, can't take the competition, eh? Oh, well, competition's a funny old thing. Well, there's nothing wrong with healthy competition, Ernie. That's what makes the world go round. You say so, Bert. Tell me, how your tomatoes been this year? Well, nearly as good as my marrows, I'm afraid. No, I shouldn't be surprised if I don't get two first. <laughs> If we don't get a first each. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sam, lovely roses. Just a thing a farmer ought to grow. <laughs> you two wouldn't understand, but it takes more than manure and water to grow blooms like this. It takes time and patience, pruning, feeding, spraying. And never once getting your hands dirty. Getting to know the soil, that's what farming's all about. Nothing wrong with manure, Sam Weston. Yeah, you should know all about that. Oh, really? And what's that supposed to mean? Well, you're full of it, aren't you? <laughs> Yokel's not a brain cell between you. Right, they're ready for us. Oh, Jamie, you look wonderful. Come on now. <laughs> be good, Houdini. Please be good. Just aim to finish, Adam. No, Emily. This year, I'm aiming for a place. Your attention, please, for the result of the pedigree goal competition. This is it. Shush, right, listen. Third prize, Pearl Bar. Second prize, Old Moor. Here we go. First prize, Houdini, yeah. Pine Cross Park. On your mark. Get set. Well done, old girl. Not so much of the old, but thank you. Go. <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Hope. Yes, James. Um, when the flood goes down, doesn't that usually mean that the race has started? Yes, around livestock, one tends not to use a starting pistol. What? Oh, no! Wait! Good luck! Will Wally! Ernie, we did it. Did what? A first for you and a first for me. Wonderful. <laughs> and a first for Lydia Houdini as well. Ah, Houdini. What? What's the matter? Uh, I think you ought to come with me, Lydia. <laughs> Wait. Wait for me. I hope he's all right. Oh, he'll be all right. It's everyone else in this tent that I'd be worried about. But how did he get here by himself? Well, he just ran off as soon as the yeah. judges made their announcements, apparently. Dini. Oh, you naughty boy, what have you done? I thought that would have been blatantly obvious. Just look at my crimson little prizes of what's left of them. He ate them before they'd even been judged. Well, it's not totally Houdini's fault, is it? Not his fault, not his fault, you stupid woman. Nobody else came in here and had a mouthful of my crimson surprises, did they? Well, if you will teach animals to eat garden plants, what do you expect? What? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I think you do. The good thing is roses aren't poisonous to goats. Not like other plants we could mention. I don't have to listen to this. No, you don't. But if you're smart, you will. We can't prove nothing, Sam Weston. Which makes you a very lucky man, but don't kid yourself. We know everything. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, don't you? Well, you're the only person in Welford who doesn't. And Houdini could have died if it wasn't for Simon at the Animal Ark. Yeah, and the rest of the village wasn't best pleased about what happened. My old dad told me about a village that wasn't best pleased once. Had to do with a squire that was unfair to one of the villagers. I know that story. They cut him off completely. Wouldn't even speak to him. Or sell him provisions. Or work for him. Send him crazy in the end. Look, I don't know what you think I'm supposed to have done, but I can assure you I'm innocent. And furthermore, I'm going to leave because I can't stand this carnage.
for a mug of cocoa. Mm. I wonder if I'll ever dance under the stars. It'll be wet, James. <laughs> 